بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد It is a great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this opportunity to take benefit from this Mubarak month of Ramadan. It is the month of Quran, it is a month of fasting, taqwa. It is a month and opportunity to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when this amal becomes a routine, whether it's according to the time now that a person becomes religious, or just the fact that every amal of deen is done as a routine, then hidayat is snatched. So when a person has an opportunity and he cannot do it, then when he doesn't have an opportunity, how more difficult it will be. And Ramadan has come with special favors and bounties and barakat which is in the ilm of Allah. So when a person has teeth, he's supposed to bite meat. Now we offer him burfi. But when he bites the burfi, it's so difficult for him to bite it that he loses a teeth or two. Then we can never offer him chicken because he can't even handle burfi. This is the moment where it is the month of barakat, it's the month of blessings, it's a month of drawing hidayat from the khazan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a person cannot do that, then how will he do it outside Ramadan? When it will be more difficult, it will not have the barakat. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the nur of the heavens and earth. Every amal has a nur. So the barakat, when we're talking of Ramadan barakat, one is barakat in time. One is barakat in time. Means in the month of Ramadan, that specific time, there's some barakat. It's an unseen treasure. Then barakat in place. So for example, a person is in Mina, Mustalifa, Arafat, Baytullah. That place, the anwarat and the tajalli of Allah is special. It's khas. And number three is barakat and tajalli in an amal. Each amal got different anwarat and nur. A, a believer is a composition of nur. When a person commits a guna, then a black spot comes. Means the nur that he has in his heart, now he's losing that nur. And this is the nur of Allah. In, in the scientific world, They've, they've cracked the formula of different things, but it's scientific, that's worldly. It's so one of the mysteries which they haven't managed to crack is to freeze time or to travel in time, to expand time or to reduce time. So there's different fields where there's quantum physics, where there's quantum mechanics, where there's a study of molecular structures, uh, to study relativity and, and the volatility and the, and the molecular state of, of the atom and transition of the electron, quantum leaps, quantum jumping, different terminologies. But in Deen, if I can call it secrets, which men cannot crack, the formulas they cannot crack. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَتَقَوْا the people of Iman brought Iman how they should have brought Iman. وَالتَّقَوْ And they obey Allah's awamir 24 hours and stay away from guna. لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ Then you would have opened for them, not blessings, barakat, the plural, from the heavens. So baraka is a terminology which can only be which only can be understood in Deen. That terminology doesn't work outside Deen. Let's analyze a logical practical example. A dog gives birth to a few a litter of pups, maybe five, six, seven, eight. A sheep gives birth. Mufti Shafiq Rahmallah has mentioned this in his Ma'riful Quran. 
and a do uh, a sheep gives birth just to one maybe two dogs are not slaughtered are not being killed every day but sheep are being, being killed every day logically we should have had more dogs in the world everywhere roaming around based on their birth rate and mortality rate that they're being killed or slaughtered but there's enough sheep sufficient sheep in the world to suffice for the needs of men this is a logical example but it still cannot be fathomed and understood let's look at uh, the قول of Mala Umar Sahib Alamburi where you say in the lifespan and the time from Nabi Ali Salatu was Salam till the Khilafat of Hazrat Umar radiyallahu an which is approximately plus minus 26 to 27 years if Sahaba in that 27 years decided they'll exhaust every avenue for dunya they'll use all their resources all their energies and make untoiled effort to acquire and amass dunya in the time of umar radiallahu in masjid al nabawi there were heaps and tons and tons of gold and the treasures the heirlooms which was inherited from the roman persian empires one family passes it down, it carries on generations. So it's not just a treasure of one era, but it's a treasure of generations. Those treasures were the feet of Sahaba. If we have to say today, the US Reserve Bank and the Chinese Reserve Bank wealth combined, I have it. Can we quantify and try to evaluate what that treasure will be? So he said, if they made a thousand years effort in dunya, they would have not gotten so much wealth what they got in that short period of time. Likewise, a person puts a hundred rand in a bank to earn interest. Logic tells you he earned ten rand. 15 rand, so he made money. Somebody else had 100 rand, they gave it in sadaqah. Logic tells you they got zero. But the interest scenario, you've declared war with Allah, everything is gone. And in the other scenario, where we got zero, you'll be sadaqat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it multiply 10 to 100 to 7, wallah yudha'ifu lima yasha, to even more than that. When, when you do a business transaction and the buyer and a seller are happy, Nabi has said, oh, come on, call. Allah will put barakah in that transaction. So some people cheat, they hide information, they don't tell them the flaws in the goods, etc. They think so they made a quick buck. But in the long term, it's going to catch up with them. Somebody's dealing with backdoor goods. It's going to catch up. It will take its toll. So it looks like you're making the millions and you're doing this. The bank is bailing you out. It looks like it, but it's not. So Baraka. This is the month of Baraka. And this is a month where there's special mercy. So one is time, place and Amal. And special about this month of Ramadan is one is we control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away the enemy, the element of Shaitan. If all the technology in the world decide they want to spend time and research to put shaitan behind bars, they can't do it. So that's a barak of a specific time. So we got an opportunity. Secondly, fasting creates that fervor. It starts controlling the nafs. And when the nafs is under control behind bars, it gives an opportunity to do more amal. So for example, in a Formula One race, if we had to tell the driver, the shayateen are locked up, so in this example, your opponents will give you a one minute head start in the race. Now where milliseconds are very important in the race there, if we give him a one minute or five minute head start, how far ahead should he be? Secondly, is generally all the cars have a regulatory structure where you can use certain amount of technology so you don't give oh, uh, unfair advantage of the opponents. 
we give this driver the opportunity that you can upgrade as much as you want. So imagine he starts the race, he's got a head start and he's got technology to make sure that he's better and above everybody else. This is the month of Ramadan. Our upgrade, our tech is controlling the nafs and the head start is the opponents. We got a head start. Shaitan's going to come. As soon as the uh, Hilal of Eid is witnessed, Shaitan's are released. So in that lap, that time, he needs to maximize, he needs to get ahead of the game. Ramadan is a month to be ahead of the game. It's an opportunity. But to get that barakah, to get it anwarat, we need to re remove routine, remove formality out of our amal. Another example, as everybody goes to the Baytullah, they want to kiss the Hajri Aswad. People fight. Whoever's been there can know what a battlefield it is. Ask everybody there what you're fighting for. Okay, what's the virtue? Nobody will know. So we're fighting for something we don't even know what we're fighting for. As Umar radiallahu an, when he used to kiss the Hajri Aswad, you should say, Inni la'alamu annaki hajar. That annaka, you are a piece of stone, you just, you're not worth anything. So he's addressing the Hajri Aswad. That you are not worth anything, you're just a piece of stone. Law la anni ra'aytu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuqabbiluk ma qabbaltu. If I had not seen the Nabi of Allah kissing you, I would have not kissed you. So my Nabi did it, I want to do it. But people are harming each other. They, they go in there for barakat. But what barakat will you get? When worse than breaking the Baytullah, breaking the Hajri Aswad is breaking the heart of a believer. How many people's heart did you break to get your objective? So it's just a routine, a formality. People are saying everybody is doing it. Some people you see there, but the Jamalat Pelt in a Shaitan, like they had war with Shaitan, like Shaitan's in front of them. And they swearing, and they fighting, and they throwing, taking the shoes, and whatever they got. But it's not Pelt in the Shaitan, it's for you to take Ibarat and lesson. So if it's done for formality, then Amal will just remain as a formality. But 10, 20, 30, 50, 70 years of our life just passes in there. People go in Jamaat in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we encourage that you have the halqa of ta'lim, part of the halqa of ta'lim is tajweed, and you are told that we are doing this temporarily so that when you go back to your homes, go back to the ulama, learn how to read Quran with tajweed, we do the last 10 surahs of the Quran so that you can get just an idea and understanding, it's a synopsis, it's an x-ray, it's, it's a scanning to give you a, a, an idea, evaluating yourself of how much effort needs to be made. Now how many people have went out in the path of Allah, have sat in the halaqat of ta'lim, have heard the targhib that when you go back to your like this, go to the Qur'an and go learn Qur'an with tajweed. How many of us have done that? So this month has got very, very special barakat and blessings. We should not miss this opportunity. Like there was a, a big ship, a giant ship, and uh, the engine failed. So the owners, the company tried and called all the best experts, but they failed. So there was one old man who was renowned, he never had those fancy certificates and all those degrees and those tech which those people had, they called him. So we, they ran out of options, so they called this old man. From a young age he used to do, he came, he, had, he came with a large bag, he had all his tools in his bag. He inspected the ship, he went to one spot, he took out his hammer from his bag. He checked here and there and he did just one or two knocks at a certain spot. And he told them, start the ship. And as they tried, it started. So they were thrilled, happy. Then came the day where he sent them the bill. So he sent them a $10,000 bill. So the owners were shocked because they were present there to see if this old man could have figured it out. And he figured it out. But $10,000 for 10 minutes of work doesn't make sense. 
So the reply it sends us an itemized balloon. So you send them an itemized balloon. Number one, tap in two dollars. Number two, knowing where to tap. $9,998 $9,998 Knowing where to tap So Allah subhanahu wa has given us Iman Allah has made us from the best ummat The ummat of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah has given us health Allah has given us wealth Allah has given us the opportunity to make ibadah Allah has given us this Mubarak man It should not be that we have this great opportunity to get forgiven by Allah. We have this great opportunity to do it right, to get it right. Allah has given us freedom, this free time. After having all of this and a person doesn't get it right, then he should cry tears of blood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. Today we are doing the amal of the four rakats before Dhuhr, which we did yesterday and the four after. So normally we do four, four, two, and another two should be recited. So twelve rakats. May you have the ala arba'i rakatin qabla dhahri wa arba'i ba'daha harramahu allahu ala nar. Whoever protects the four rakats before dhahr and after dhahr, Allah will make jahannam haram for him. Another riwayat, fatamassa wajahu nar abda. That fire of Jahannam will not touch his face. And it is a, it's a special time. That this is a time where the Asman, the heavens open up. We were talking of Barakah. The heavens open up. Man salla qabla dhahr arba raka'atin ka'annama tahajjad bihinna min laylati. Whoever reads the four rakats, it's as if they have made tahajjud, the reward and the virtues of a person who gets up at night and reads tahajjud. Likewise, as Aisha radiallahu anha says that Nabi used to love to read that salah. So I said, Oh Nabi of Allah, I see you love the salat at this time. He said, Yuftahu fiha abwabu sama. That the doors of the heavens open. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at mercy what his servants at a time. Wahiya salatun. This is a salah wa great Anbiya alayhi salatu salam Adam, Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa alayhi salatu salam It was their mamul and habit to make amal on this. So let's make a niyyah till I die. Four, 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 two and two. And the dua for today is Bismillahi alladhi la yadurru ma'a ismihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil sama وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ To read it three times, morning and evening. Nabi alayhi salam said, O kama qal, whoever reads this in the morning or evening, فَيَذُرَّهُ شَيْءٍ Nothing will harm him. This rewrite, as Aban ibn Uthman رضي الله عنه, narrated it. So Aban, paralysis, he was covered with paralysis, he was paralyzed. So the person who was listening to this narration looked at him and said that I see you narrating this, but you are paralyzed. So he said, the Qadir, it was the destiny of Allah that the day I forgot to read this dua, I became paralyzed. And this is the same dua as Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anh read. When the commander had poisoned the enemy and he drank it and he read this dua and the poison did not harm him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to become making amal wa akhiru da'awana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.